What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, and today we're going to dig further into From Software's first franchise, King's Field, and the lore behind the game. This is the second part of a miniseries covering the games, and we'll cover the first Kingsfield game that came to the States, Kingsfield 1. If you haven't seen the first video in the series, I recommend checking that out before watching this one. And with that, we begin. Within the forest of Verdite, inside of a hidden cavern, written by the High Elves on the base of a monument is a warning. It is written, a great ship has fallen from the heavens, it struck the island of Melanit, and was buried deep within the island. Those who come from faraway lands to seek its buried treasures shall never return alive. The Isle of Melanit is home to the dragon grass, created by the earth. Not only this, but one of the two dragon gods, Gyra, settled in Melanit. The High Elves discovered this island containing the dragon grass and built a holy shrine around it. As the dragons had been warring for centuries, they no longer had the energy to fight one another. As such, they created weapons to kill each other. Gyra, the dragon god of darkness, created the Moonlight Sword to kill Seath. Meanwhile, Seath, the dragon god of light, created the Dark Slayer in order to kill Gyra. In order to defeat Gyra, Seath gifted a high elf warrior named Merlin, who was known as the Dragon of the Woods, several pieces of equipment. These included a dark crystal, a full set of armor, and Seath's sword. Merlin was, however, defeated by Gyra, and several pieces of his equipment sealed away by Seath for one who would eventually be worthy of the dark crystal's sword, the Dark Slayer. Around this time, monsters hidden deep underground began to surface and wipe out the High Elves. The majority of them died from this, and those who survived died from a mysterious poison. With Merlin's defeat, several beings guarded the passage to Gyra as the Guard, who were the most skilled warriors in order to prevent Gyra from being summoned. Cal Fargus, a great ice warrior who ran a coliseum on Melanit, was one such warrior. However, he was transformed into an ice monster by Gyra. The devil, Galfi, was a guard, and a great mage named Shaddam helped guard with his magic. Shaddam was one of two great mages who studied under Orladin. Orladin being a legendary mage who studied how to create life at the land of the beginning, where it was said all life formed. Shaddam, a powerful earth mage and the best mage on the northern continent, became the owner of the Colosseum after Cal Fargus by utilizing his magic to create a one-eyed giant. This one-eyed giant also served to guard the passage to Gyra. Not only this, but Shaddam created Earth Elementals to guard the passage to the High Elf Graveyard, which contained the Elf Key, the only way to retrieve the Dark Crystal Seath that gifted Merlin. In current times, villagers know of the legends of Melanit, and believe either Seath or Gyra lives there. Legends of valuable crystals spread throughout the northern continent, and, despite legends of the poison on the island, where it is said that once a person has been infected by the poison, they cannot leave the island, poor and desperate people attempted to travel to the island, with many dying in the crossing, and the survivors becoming stuck due to this poison. Not only this, but monsters roam the land. Legends say, never approach the island, for a sleeping beast in the darkness waits for a great awakening. Thousands of years before the events of Kingsfield, Japan, and the Forester line of families, reigned King Harvine III, who was the great ruler of the northern continent. This continent consisting of the lands of Granitiki, Ygritte, and Verdite. He unified the three distinct nations, and, against the wishes of a certain fortune teller, decided to build his castle on the mysterious island of Melanit. The King of Wind, King Harvine, had strong magical powers. However, he was not a man of foresight or vision. He didn't listen to me, and he tried to build his castle there. 
to help build his kingdom, King Harvine took with him the great fire mage Sedek, who had studied under Orladin along with the earth mage Shaddam. The mage Sedek served under King Harvine and helped him build his castle within the Isle of Melanit. The lighthouses around the shores were lit by Sedek's fire magic, King Harvine's magical flute that could form special passages for his user was created by him, salamanders, magical beings with fire powers, were created to guard his castle, and a room to protect King Harvine's treasure. Monsters of the land arose, and despite his best efforts, King Harvine was unable to fend them off. He retreated from Melanit with what men he could. However, he left many soldiers behind who can now be found in Harvine's graveyard. Supposedly, they believed Harvine would come back for them, and he never did. Their voices can still be heard. With King Harvine's withdrawal from Melanit, the monsters took over, and he lost the great war taking place over the northern continent, with the land splitting into three, Granitiki, Ygritte, and Verdite. Not only that, but Sedek betrayed him, defeated him, and for a time ruled the northern continent himself, thus ending the rule of King Harvine. To be clear, before discussing this portion, the story described in the instruction manuals for the various King's Field games and the events within some of the games themselves seem to differ from one another, as I discussed in part 1 of this video series, in the events of King's Field Japan and King's Field 2, is the Royal Cemetery of Verdite John Alfred Forrester has gone into in order to emerge victorious. However, in the story as outlined by the instruction manuals for Kingsfield 1 and 2, it's the Royal Cemetery of King Harvine on the Isle of Melanit that John Alfred Forrester traverses. This doesn't really make sense from the events and layouts within the games, but I wanted to point it out. Either way, he emerged victorious with Cease Moonlight's sword in hand. After telling the villagers of Verdite about his exploits and battles, the villagers declared, Alfred is to be the new King of Verdite, crowning him King Alfred. And for a time, there was finally peace, with Verdite becoming the greatest of the three northern countries. King Alfred went on to marry, and he and his queen, Noel, had a son, Lyle Forrester. But the peace didn't last, and soon, around the time of King Alfred's 35th birthday, monsters began appearing in caverns near Verdite. King Alfred went to take care of the issue with his trusty Moonlight Sword, only to find it had been stolen. Immediately, King Alfred sent a search party to find the missing blade. His soldiers searched all of the villages to no avail, until finally, they happened upon a letter deep within the Verdite Forest. It was written in an ancient writing only the High Elves could read, and upon deciphering it, it read, Necron seeks the powers of the Moonlight Sword. He lives on a mystical island in the midst of the northern continent. Necron controls the island of Melanit. Upon hearing the news, King Alfred sent his soldiers to Melanit to retrieve the Moonlight Sword. However, they were never heard from again. Months later, a lifelong friend of King Alfred's, Prince Alexander of the nation Granitiki, was visiting Verdite and King Alfred. The two had trained together as children, and even then, Alexander was both a promising mage and incredibly skilled with the blade. King Alfred told Alexander of the issues plaguing the nation, and of his missing Moonlight Sword, and contemplated leaving the nation to retrieve it himself. Alexander shot this down, and requested he leave for Melanit in King Alfred's stead. Alexander wanted to prove himself worthy to be a king of his nation, and proclaimed he would destroy whatever monster was on the island, and bring back the sword. King Alfred granted him this request, and Alexander set sail for the island of Melanit. On the way, monsters from the sea attacked his ship, destroying it. All of his men were lost to sea, except for him, who had luckily been entangled in seaweed and drifted to shore. In the shipwreck, he lost all of his equipment, however, he was here, on the cursed island of Melanit. Those who traveled to the island of Melanit, several of them merchants looking to trade, and others people desperate to find valuable crystals supposedly on the island, have gotten stuck there, due to the poison of the island. The legends were true, and these villagers cannot leave without the island's water to survive. Making matters worse, the island of Melanit has been completely taken over by Necron and his will. Necron, who came to the island with the Moonlight Sword and brainwashed countless soldiers to mindlessly do his bidding. Not only that, but Necron has taken control of all the food and items of the island, and has forced everyone to work under him, searching for the items he wants in order to be supplied food and safety from the monsters of the land. 
Necron is a nice guy. He gives us daylight and food. But everyone has to work in the mine for that anyway. He even has control over the sunlight of the island, only providing light to the areas and villages he deems worthy who don't cross him. And some have, as Necron has forced the villagers into laboring for him. Many of those, like Al Hunt, survive through the villagers who sympathize with them, and by visiting the kind-hearted Nola Bagel, who not only has daylight, but also the water they need to survive. Necron took over the Colosseum, meant to guard outsiders from the dragon god Gyra, and has utilized the Moonlight Sword to call forth Gyra. He even controls the monsters of the land, such as the Logstalkers, who were dead trees before being given a soul by Necron. As the Dark Crystal, gifted by Seath to destroy Gyra, resides on Melanid, Necron, working through Gyra, has forced all of the villagers to mine in the dangerous big mine and search for the Elf Cave, where this supposedly resides within. There is a cave made by elves somewhere down in the underworld. The elves had hidden there just before they died. Necron is looking for something down there, so the crystal miners who receive the daylight are down there digging for it. What Necron wants is in the elf cave, but nobody has been able to find this cave. In exchange for mining, he provides these crystal miners with food, daylight, and safety while within the village. Meanwhile, he's locked up Leon Shore, a descendant of the High Elves and the only one capable of crafting the dark crystal Necron is searching for into a powerful weapon that could be used to slay Gyra. It seems that this is so, when the crystal is finally found, Necron can force Leon to craft it for himself, as otherwise Necron would have just killed Leon. And this is the state of the island when Alexander arrives. After arriving on the island of Melanit, Alexander was immediately attacked by Krakens as he worked his way into the caverns of the island. He encountered Necron's mindless soldiers before finally happening across the villages of the western coast. Many of these without any form of daylight, and the inhabitants long deceased from being attacked by the monsters of the land. The only area daylight could be found was outside of the residence of Nola Bagel. Nola, who arrived on the island to search for her missing brother Dias. My name is Nola. My brother, Dias, came to this island two years ago, but we haven't seen each other. If you've seen my brother, would you tell him that I am here? Dias came to this island to meet a powerful warrior. I don't know if you wanted to learn something from him, or if you wanted to fight him. A childhood friend of both Nola and Dias, Phi, also came to the island with Dias, but has also disappeared. In searching further along the west coast, Alexander found the mostly deserted small mine, where the crystal miners had mostly dug out all of the crystals they could find. Many had decided to try their luck in the much larger and far more dangerous large mine, also working for the man controlling the island Necron. Just outside of this mine, Alexander was able to find Nola's missing childhood friend, Phi. Phi, who tells Alexander, You must be one of the soldiers looking for Necron. He is terribly strong. I was with him for a long time, but now I'm hiding from him. With information in tow, and finally donning some equipment, Alexander delved deeper into the island, coming across Necron's prison, and a soldier of Verdite, Ernest. Ernest, who is King Alfred's right-hand man. After sending his soldiers to the island and losing contact with them, he had decided to come to the island himself, only to be locked away by Necron's soldiers. In being set free by Alexander, Ernest informs him that they still haven't been able to find the King's Sword, the Moonlight Sword, and that he believes Necron can control all of the monsters swarming around. He leaves to try and find the other soldiers of Verdite to try and save them, while Alexander continues on his quest to explore the island and find the sword himself. In doing so, he happens across the central village, which is filled with miners, citizens, and merchants who are all working with Necron in order to survive. He also finds the mostly abandoned and destroyed eastern village, and finally heads into the big mine himself. After conquering the trials and tribulations of the big mine, including passing through Shaddam's Earth Cave and giant Earth Elementals, he's able to find the elf cave Shaddam was guarding, and beat Necron to the punch. What he finds here isn't the Dark Crystal, but an elf key that can be used in the shrine the elves had crafted so long ago. The elf shrine is blocked off, however, by more special keys and a code. Alexander finds the code in Leon Shore's house, who, like Ernest, he's also able to rescue from a jail cell. Leon, who informs Alexander that if Alexander brings him the Dark Crystal Seath had granted them, he can craft it into an extremely powerful blade, one that just might help conquer the ruler of this island. The first shrine key Alexander finds is washed up behind a giant kraken. Meanwhile, the second one he finds is a treasure of the ancient King Harvine, who for a time had constructed a castle on Melanit. 
With everything he needs, Alexander enters the Elven Shrine to find not only the Dark Crystal he's able to exchange his Elf Key for, but also an ancient dragon grass, which has been around since the creation of the Earth and for countless eons. The dragon grass informs Alexander about the ancient battle of Seath and Gyra. These two dragons have fought each other for so long that they no longer have the energy to continue fighting. Thus, Gyra made the Moonlight Sword to kill Seath, and Seath made the Dark Slayer to kill Gyra. They have been waiting for the chosen warrior who has enough power to wield these weapons. The guards of endless time are the woods, the winds, and the fog. Everything is created and destroyed by the earth. For everyone who loves their mother, Gyra must be destroyed. With this information, Alexander returns to Leon Shore, who crafts the Dark Slayer, only to have it stolen by Necron, and apparently, the Dark Slayer even has the power to slay the ancient dragon Gyra, as Gyra would seem to be the sleeping beast on the island, whose monsters have been ruining Verdite, Alexander sets out to find Necron, the Dark Slayer, and the Moonlight Sword. In searching for Necron, Alexander fights off against the guards of the Colosseum, and finds Necron's nefarious plans had gone even deeper. Utilizing a light crystal, Necron devised to create demon lords who would obey his will. In order to create them, he has taken dragon fairies and turned them into these monsters. Monsters. One of these being Muria, the same dragon fairy from Kingsfield, Japan, who, along with Gyra, had helped John Alfred Forrester by turning his dragon sword into the Moonlight Sword. No. Open. The sword will have the light again. The power of the sword and the magic. Please, close the door. This place, sealed, still sleeping. It seems she warns that Gyra is sealed away sleeping, but this door has been opened. And finally, Alexander happens across Necron himself, who has now killed Ernest. Necron, who guards Gyra, stating, I heard that Nola has come to this island, but I have to stay and guard here and fight until the last moment. And, as it turns out, Necron is none other than Dias Bagel, Nola's lost brother who had come to the island with Fi and is the cause of all of these problems. Utilizing his previous training and the ancient magics he found in the runes of Melanus, Alexander is able to fight off Necron and find the Dark Slayer. But his mission isn't over. The Moonlight Sword is still missing, so he heads off in search of the dragon god Gyra. This takes him into a strange dimension with translucent walls that seems to be out of this world and into outer space. Here he finds the Awoken Gyra guarding the Moonlight Sword behind him. Using the now forged Dark Slayer, granted by Seath with the purpose of killing Gyra, Alexander is able to fight and slay the ancient dragon god, defeating another ancient evil, and finally obtaining the stolen Moonlight Sword. As it turns out, he was the chosen warrior. With Gyra slain, all the monsters and demons disappear from Melanit. Alexander returned to Verdite with Leon Shore, where he and King Alfred sealed away the dragon swords. And, once again, peace returned to the lands of the northern continent. However, one dragon god still remains. I hope you guys enjoy this installment of Kingsfield lore. If you missed the first part, I highly recommend checking that out for reference, as this directly follows that. As I mentioned, I found multiple conflicting sources with information on the lore of the game, all of which I believe to be official, so I used the game itself as my primary source wherever possible. As those of you who were waiting know, this video took me quite some time to get out, so I'm not sure when exactly I'll be able to finish the Verdi Trilogy of Kingsfield lore videos. As always, thank you so much to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Thank you to One-Eyed Sniper, Richard Sun, Dark Sun Rebel, Aslish, Invidentia, Ryan Drawn, and Jason Buck. Thank you guys seriously so, so much for your support. But if you enjoy From Software content, check out my other videos, oftentimes covering one of my favorite game companies, or some of my other content I put a lot of work into and think you might also enjoy like a full retrospective of Kingsfield. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.